Hi, welcome once again for another session of DB2 Express Speed SUL Story. On today's session, we're going to understand the concept of climate change. We will connect cables, where and the left joint, right joint, and pull out the joint. What we have used so far is a single table in the we will connect tables to generate a more comprehensive or detailed information on which most of the modern databases have been set up. Established enterprises implement relational databases in such a way that it will eliminate duplication of data or redundancy. Duplicate data are expensive because you need to acquire more storages that will lead additional tasks and manpower to maintain it. Relational database is organized to group related data in one table. Repetition of data is almost eliminated because you do not include columns that are not necessary to a particular table. We will see the significance of primary and foreign keys as we establish the connections of tables. We will combine also groupings and filtering of rows as we select particular conditions on columns. We discuss the role of primary and foreign keys in tables. Primary key sets the uniqueness of a row. This key guarantees the existence of duplicate values is not possible once this is set during the creation of the table. Foreign key, on the other hand, serves as a link from one table to another table, which in most cases contains the primary key or of the given set of rows or records. You may find significance of primary and foreign keys in one-to-many or many-to-one relationship that exists between tables. The given ERD shows the many-to-one relationships between employee and department tables. Work depth is said to be the foreign key of employee table. Depth no underlined is set as the primary key of department table. In other words, many work depths can exist inside the employee table since many employees may work on one department as work depth code suggests. Depth no is the same as work depth but its existence is limited only once inside a department table. Depth no guarantees that there will be only one existence of depth no code and one can immediately identify the name of that code represents, which is the depth name. This is logical since no other department should exist in an organization with the same name and purpose. Let us launch first our DB2 server. You can connect tables by simply using the word clause. Let us say we want to get the department name in which an employee belongs. We execute this script. Here's the output. Let us check the structure of table employee. Work depth serves as the code in which the department employees work at. Let us check the structure of department. Department consists of depth no and depth name that lists all the departments of the organization.
we separate the two tables with the comma and equate work dep and dep no after where to establish the connections of the two tables. You will notice here that records which are present on both tables are included on the result. Department codes from F22 to J22 were not included on the result since these are not seen inside work depth of employees table. Inner join or simply join can be used to achieve the same result on what the where clause is used. The syntax in using an inner join is the following. Thus, if we want to achieve the same result using inner join, we have You achieve the same result. On most cases, not all rows or records have equivalence with the related table. What if the rows are not present on the left table but still we want to include these rows on our list? Here we will employ left join in our statement. But how does a left join work? Here you could see on the animation that each row of the department table is accessing each row of the project table. It will look for a match and include that row if that corresponding match is established. Here we include all rows from the department and include only all include only rows that are that match the column key of the department table what do you need to remember when using left join the first table after from serves as the master or the parent table the second right adjoint table is the slave or the child all columns that belong to the first table, which are included in the select statement, will be populated or displayed regardless if the adjoining table has no equivalence on the second table. Here we will use alias name for each table and indicate it on columns included in the statement. Now let us use left join on our problem. We're going to list all departments with or without projects. Sort the report according to department name. Let's do the script. Here is the result. We have used an alias name for department and project to prevent ambiguity on our statement. Remember that depno is present on both tables. The two in order by represent the second column of our statement, which is the department name. The result indicates that branch offices and is FIFI Computer Service Division have no projects recorded because of the null values on project number and project name. As mentioned earlier, the first table after PROM serves as the master or parent and the second right adjoining table is the slave or child of the statement meaning all columns that belong to the first table which are included on the select statement 
will be populated regardless if the adjoining table has no equivalence on the second table. In this case, there are no prajno present for department, branch offices, and, and SPFI computer service division. If we have left join, we have right join. The second table with the right join clause serves as the master and the first table is the slave. This is the opposite of left join. We can use the following syntax. But how does right join works? So on this animation, department is the master and project is the slave. So it's the same logic but in a reverse order. Right is the master. What you need to remember when using right join, right table serves as the master or parent, left table is the slave or the child. All columns that belong to the right table, which are included in select statement, will be populated regardless if the adjoining table has no equivalence on the left table. We still use alias name for each one each table to indicate it to indicate it on the columns included in the statement. So how do we use right join? On our problem, we're going to list all departments with or without projects using right join. We sort the report according to department name. There's our script. Here we achieve the same result. So you may ask, how do we include all rows of both tables? Here we could use the full outer join or simply full join. And this would be the syntax. So the next requirement is to produce list of employees. We include all departments regardless if it has no employees on it. And the last, we sort the list according to department name. Again, this would be our ERD for employee and department. Let us type the script for the full join. Execute this script. So this would be our result. The results included branch offices from F2 to J2 and development center even if does not contain employees on that department the emp no last name first name work that contain null value in the list that shows no employee listed on this department you may notice that we use alias name even there is no possible ambiguity on this it is an important practice So you may not be lost in determining which table does a column belong. Hi, Jerry here. Thanks for watching. If you like to see the script of the video presented, please click the link below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Buy the book for more challenging 
exercises with solutions. Visit our Facebook and Twitter account. Bye.